All right, guys, USA is the most wanted man. Guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the number one leaker. The number one leaker. This guy made headlines for so often. Everybody, you know how so, just like randomly someone will become like a household name like this. This guy is the OG leaker, basically, I guess you could say. I mean, I'm not sure if he's still wanted by the USA or anything, but Edward Snowden, guys. Um, it escaped the country, but um, let's see what this video is all about, guys. You know what I mean? This is the most wanted man in the world. He's been charged with espionage, hunted by the government since 2013, and now he's been given Russian citizenship by Putin himself. This is the U.S. Russian, bro. What the heck? No way. U.S. government's public enemy number one. Welcome to Explained. On June 6, 2013, a series of reports by The Guardian and The Washington Post's rocked the world. Top secret documents detailing the NSA, aka the National Security Agency's activities, were leaked by an unidentified source. And Americans found out the US government was spying on them. Three days later, this man came forward. Edward Snowden. A 29-year-old high school dropout. Guys, 29, oh snap, bro. He's just about as old as out whose computer ability guys when he he got famous when he was a little bit young younger uh, i'm 30 guys so these have landed him jobs with the cia and with an nsa contractor uh i've been uh, a systems engineer systems administrator uh senior advisor uh dang bro so he he knows a little quite a bit about technology right guys then uh, for the uh, Central Intelligence Agency Solutions Consultant. Whoa, whoa, he's working for the CIA and stuff? Snap. And a uh, telecommunications information systems officer. But whoa, whoa, bro, like, definitely has his credentials for sure, right? But in his short time with the NSA, he discovered it had dangerously overreached itself. Uh, when you're in positions of, of privileged access, like a, a systems... This is how... The fact that he um like leaked all this stuff is how I even found out the NSA was a thing. I didn't even know. I did not even know the NSA had all like uh, uh I didn't even know the NSA you know was doing all this stuff before this guy came around. I'm not gonna lie, like I I never heard of them. Never heard of them. As administrator for these sort of intelligence community agencies you're exposed to a lot more information on a broader scale than the average employee and because of that you see things that uh, may be disturbing but uh, over the course of a normal person's career you'd only see one or two of these instances uh, when you see everything you see them on a more frequent basis and you recognize that some of these things are actually abuses and when you talk to people about them uh, in a place like this, where this is the, the normal state of business, people tend not to take them very seriously and, you know, move on from them. But over time, that awareness of wrongdoing sort of builds up, and you feel compelled to talk about it. The material Expert. Snowden came... So he just, you know, he's disobeying the government. He's, like, the home country he grew up in, guys. All right, guys, sorry, I got attacked came across exposed an almost limitless government-run surveillance program. Since then, he is wanted for one of the most significant national security leaks in U.S. history. But what exactly was in those documents? For starters, it revealed the NSA had a secret program called PRISM, a system that gave the government... Man, they, get, that, they even gave it a kind of like a creepy name, like... Prisms are related to pyramids and stuff, or at least, you know, kind of like pyramid shaped, right, guys? A backdoor to access private user data from companies like Google, Apple, and Facebook. It also had a secret court order that allowed it to collect telephone records from millions of Verizon customers. What? A secret court order? Oh my gosh. Sad, bro. They actually got a secret court order, man. That's so sneaky, bro. Like, Come on now. Yeah. This included not only criminals, but law-abiding citizens as well. They're like, yo, let me get some of your data. Let me get some of your data. You know what I mean? Like, then there was- 
They, they don't even tell us. They just take it, basically. It was an 18-page presidential memo showing Obama ordering intelligence officials to come up with a list of overseas targets for cyber attacks. And all of this was just the tip of the iceberg. The NSA was hacking computers in Hong Kong and mainland China, a few of which were military systems. Dang, bro, is, is straight up gaining intelligence on other countries as well, guys. It also tapped the mobile phone of Germany's chancellor at the time, Angela Merkel. It Dang, even showed bro. that Britain's government communications headquarters, or GCHQ, was conducting mass surveillance of its citizens. Not to Guys, I can kind of see, you know, I mean, Britain already has cameras everywhere, doesn't it, guys? Like, that's nothing new. But yeah, definitely a surveillance state for sure, guys. Mentioned both the NSA and the GCHQ had discussed methods of deception, the use of propaganda, mass messaging, and stories on social media to influence people the way they wanted. The list was endless. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's good influence, such as when, you know, somebody try, trying to influence somebody to not, you know, hurt anyone. Uh, and there's good surveillance, you know, tr trying to, you know, you know, they basically trying to get, you know, catch someone before they, you know, try to hurt somebody. So I do see a little bit of rationale in this, in my opinion. Yes. In fact, national intelligence officials believe Snowden had downloaded nearly 2 million files. Before we go further, hit that like button and subscribe to Explained. But how did he sneak out sensitive documents from a top secret government facility? Well, he didn't use any sophisticated hacking software or devices. Believe it or not, all he used was thumb drives. But what? that doesn't mean it was easy. Snowden had to plan the leak and his escape carefully. He had three things working in his favor. Damn, bro, he's straight up, guys, straight up going against everybody, man. That, like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, his whole country, like, the whole company, he, he, or uh, government, rather, that he's, that he's basically working for as well. Number one was his location. Snowden was contracted to the NSA by a company called Booz Allen Hamilton. He was based in Hawaii. 5,000 miles away from the prying eyes of everyone at the NSA's headquarters in Maryland. He was also six hours behind them. So while most people had left the office for the day in Fort Meade, Snowden's workday was barely halfway through. Number two was the thin client system. Snowden had access to the NSA headquarters servers via a computer system called Thin Client. It basically gives users like not even hacking him, he just had access to the information. Access to specific types of files based on the- Like he's not that much of a hacker, but I mean, I guess he could hack. ...their profile. But the setup- Because of his credentials, right guys? ...was outdated, and Snowden was no ordinary user. He was a systems administrator. So unlike other NSA users who had restrictions on the classified information they could access, Snowden's high security clearance gave him more privileges. At his level, he was the auto thing. I, I think they'll probably like, you know, at, after this whole Snowden situation, probably like not give their employees this much access to this information that they can just freely get. He could pose as any other user, access the NSA's intranet without leaving a digital signature, and literally function like a ghost user if he wanted to. And so Snowden's job profile was factor number three. As a systems administrator and analyst, he had the authority to use thumb drives. He could literally copy information from one computer to another without raising any suspicions. After working for guys using using thumb drives, I mean you got to use like thumb drives or some sort of cloud thing to transfer this data, right guys? Or maybe just like an external hard drive. Just 4 weeks with the NSA in Hawaii, Snowden decided it was time for the world to know what they I didn't even know uh, thumb drives could be that uh, take that much data, bro. He's leaking mil tons and tons of pages. Been doing, but he knew no one would believe him without any proof. So he downloaded the documents without raising suspicion and cleverly snuck the thumb drives past security. The next day, he asked for a leave of absence without pay, and then extended it by saying he was suffering from epilepsy. But when he stopped answering without pay as well, what the heck? During calls and didn't return. 
The authorities suspected something was wrong, and the NSA began looking for him. By then, Snowden had made his way from Hawaii to the safety of Hong Kong. He met two trusted journalists, Glenn Greenwald and Laura Poitras, and gave them the story that would- Dang bro, he's been like plotting this for a while, guys. Do you think this is a, like a, a net good thing for the USA or not, guys? Let me know in the comments below. Changed the way people looked at the government forever. Snowden's leak sparked debates about the NSA's secret powers all over the world. I called for a thorough review of our surveillance operations. He was charged with theft of government property, unauthorized communication of national defense information, and willful communication of classified intelligence to an unauthorized person. And despite the U.S.'s... Damn, bro. Now, now, they, now other countries are just basically, like, hosting him because of what he did. Efforts to extradite him from Hong Kong, Snowden managed to get on a plane to Russia. Initially, he was granted asylum after Putin said that Russia had no extradition agreement with the U.S. But he did say Snowden was wrong to reveal U.S. secrets. Что касается возможной выдачи, куда бы то ни было, то мы можем выдавать каких-то граждан иностранных государств только в государства, с которыми у нас есть соответствующие международные соглашения о выдаче преступников. С Соединенными Штатами у нас такого соглашения нет на территории. Snowden tried to seek asylum in other countries too, with no success. I applied for asylum in 21 different countries. So all Dang, bro. Gotta straight up apply like it's a job, man. All throughout Western Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, so, like, you can't even go into like a ton of countries now just because he's a wanted dude. And all of them tried to avoid giving an answer uh, because they didn't want to say one way or another. Or alienate the United States government by taking a public side against them. He was also willing to come back to the U.S. under the right circumstances. I've made it clear uh, that I'm always willing to return home. I would return home tomorrow as long as the government was prepared to be reasonable and protect the interests of our rights and society. And um, how would you describe the government's reasonableness in this case? What would you be looking to from them for you to return? Well, so far they've said they won't torture me. Which is a start. I <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I mean, that's not the biggest deal breaker, right, guys? Torture as in like arrest him, because t- torture is basically like getting arrested, right, guys? Think, um, but we haven't gotten much further than that. But it's something you're actively, or you and your lawyers are actively discussing with the government. I assume we're still waiting for them to call us back. Eventually, he was granted permanent residency in Russia in 2020, and in September 2022. Putin gave him Russian citizenship. Right. After what you said, after years of separation from our parents, my wife and I have no desire to be separated from our son. That's why in this era of the pandemic and closed border, we're applying for U.S. Re- Russian citizenship. Okay. Two, Putin gave him Russian citizenship. Right before we were coming on the air, Edward Snowden, we found out, is now a Russian citizen. President Vladimir Putin signing a decree. Over the years, Snowden has done several interviews to explain how our phones spy on us and how they can be tapped. Nosy Smurf. What's Nosy Smurf? Nosy Smurf is the the hot micing tool. So, for example, if it's in your pocket, they can turn the microphone on and listen to everything that's going on around you. Some people look at Snowden. As, you know, I, I always thought it was automatically recording as a traitor, but millions believe he's a hero for risking his life and exposing the U.S., U.K., and its allies' unwarranted mass surveillance schemes. What's your take on Snowden's leaked documents? Did he save democracy and make things more transparent? Or should he have just quit and not leaked anything? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Yeah, let me know as well, guys. Explain. Oh, sorry, I don't know who your name is. Oh, sorry. I, uh, my name is Edward Snowden. Uh, I go by Ed. Yeah, guys, check out Explained in the uh, in the description if you haven't, if you don't know about them. Uh, he's the government enemy number one. Not the public's. I'm sure most of the public sees him as a hero. Yeah, I mean, there's a good point. Make a good point there. Um, let's see. This The man should be recognized as a patriot. Hopefully he's alive when people realize what he did. A patriot, guys. <laughs> I thought, I mean, 
I can see what, what he means there. Edward Snowden is a national hero and very brave. He, he had a wonderful, affluent life with a beautiful wife and family, and, and he gave it all to tell America, the American people the truth. I wonder, hopefully he can still see his wife. I think he can, though. Uh, Alright, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace out. Appreciate the support. I do all my reactions live on Twitch, so if you want to come through, say hi, you're more than welcome. I'll see you guys next one. Later, guys.